I'm Charles Swansbury and I've been the General Secretary here in Liberia for the past 12 months. And I'm Denise Swansbury and I am the Command Secretary for Women's Ministries and the Projects Coordinator and the High School Coordinator. Well Liberia is a very unusual country, it's never been colonised and um, it's only emerged from a 14 year long civil war in 2005. So the effects of the war and the implications on people are very much in evidence here. And certainly as far as the Salvation Army is concerned, we struggled because so many people were, uh, had no schooling for many, many years. And so the levels of education are very low and people struggle with getting further education. So the Salvation Army is um, vital here, among other organisations, but certainly the Salvation Army school system is highly valued and we have a number of schools and this really enables the Liberians to have an education which perhaps otherwise they wouldn't manage to achieve. If we stick with the education system and that aspect of our work here, we're very pleased to report that education in Liberia is, is growing, um, schools, many more schools, but within the Salvation Army, the education system has proved very valuable. Oh, just over a year ago, um, the Education Secretariat was introduced, and it's a very good thing for the Salvation Army in the Liberia Command. It brings together all of our schools under one umbrella, it ensures that things are done well, it's good accountability, and even in, as far as the curriculum is concerned, just some months ago we had a curriculum harmonisation exercise where the national curriculum for the country and the Salvation Army curriculum were brought together and now each school runs that same curriculum at the same time which enables children even to move from school to school and all is covered well and um, things are moving forward in that direction. Also in the past year we've completed um, the first academic year of our newly opened vocational and train technical training college and uh, in August 2009 we graduated about 350 students who qualified in uh, practical work as carpentry, metalwork, woodwork and uh, a number of other craft based um, courses leading to professional qualifications and we've just started the second year of operation and during this year we're also seeking to elevate the status of that centre into that of a fully fledged and accredited uh, polytechnic so that we could offer a much higher level of qualification and courses. Uh, within the Salvation Army in Liberia we have 39 core and outposts and uh, many of them as you can imagine are very rural and uh, isolated areas and one of the struggles they have is the general level of uh, illiteracy. Some, in some core they only have perhaps one or two people who can read or write. One of the things that's been introduced in the last year is that of creating sections uh, of three or four core and outposts grouped together under the leadership of a section officer. Prior to that, all the corps reported directly to command headquarters, a very much centralised administration. And over the past year, um, we've introduced these 11 sections within the command, and we're trying over the, the next few years to delegate more responsibility and more of the coordination of the work of the Salvation Army to these section officers. And as we speak, we're actually uh, gathering together the section officers for specific training in a number of areas such as uh, core reviews where they review the finances and the statistics and uh, review one another in a personnel setting. As you heard my husband say many of the core in Liberia are in rural settings. Some of them are far from Monrovia and some of them are far away from another officer and another core and certainly even within the sections about which we've been speaking the officers are far away from one another. This can be a cause of um, concern because there is little contact and fellowship therefore among the officers and we try as much as we can when we're going around particularly in our Sunday ministry to make sure we spend time with the officers and to hear some of their concerns 
and to encourage them. But this is certainly a concern for prayer. Liberia is a very openly Christian country. Everywhere you go, on the back of cars and on vehicles and on shop signs, you'll see very prominent and proactive Christian messages. But there is a relatively small Muslim population, but quite strong. And uh, as you can also imagine, with a lot of uh, African settings, there is uh, cultural and ancestral worship, and indeed uh, what they call traditional medicine, which some of which involves witchcraft. And so there are issues and uh, practices which are often a challenge to uh, salvationists in rural settings and in isolated communities. And some of these practices are issues that uh, our officers try to face, but inevitably there are always calls for compromise and, uh, and not quite upholding the Christian standards. And so we try to encourage and support those officers who are striving to maintain Christian ideals and standards in their work and practice. Well, as far as uh, the Salvation Army is concerned, we're committed to try to um, ensure that every corps has its own land, its own hall and its own quarters. We have a number of corps and outposts where there's no property at all. The corps officer perhaps builds himself a house or tries to build a temporary hall and we struggle because uh, with inadequate resources to try to provide these very basic amenities and facilities and uh, we're very grateful to the Canada and Bermuda Territory for their support in enabling a number of corps to even have a well within their immediate vicinity. In many communities they have to walk to the nearest river for several miles to obtain fresh water and through our medical uh, mobile clinic we seek to reach out to provide primary health care and opportunity for uh, very immediate treatment to, to communities who might have to walk many, many miles to even get the most basic of treatments. So we try to be very proactive, meeting very practical needs, but of course that's just the tip of the iceberg and there are a huge number of other issues relating to the effects of civil war which are only beginning to be understood, let alone addressed. Within the women's ministry, in Liberia. We have the very um, obvious programs such as the Home League which is very important. We have the Senior Home League and just recently we've introduced the Junior Home League, sometimes called Junior Miss in some territories. And currently we only have two or three corps who've embraced the Junior Home League. The, for young women and men if they wish to come, it's open to them also but we're encouraging young girls to learn skills, to come together in fellowship, to be educated in different ways, not just about things in the home, but to be educated on all kinds of topics, and we encourage them to come and learn also about the Lord Jesus and about the Salvation Army, so that they might be better homemakers and mothers in the future days, which we believe will help this country as we train and develop young people so they will become better citizens of Liberia. Within the Home League um, there are other aspects within the women's ministries, for example the League of Mercy is quite strong and we're encouraging that even more um, day by day so that people will go and visit those who are sick, those who perhaps are lonely, those who are very poor and try and help them in practical ways to show the love of the Lord Jesus through the League of Mercy. As far as age is, age is concerned, um, it's surprisingly not as common as we would imagine, having served in other parts of Africa where even on a very basic assessment a third of the population is affected by AIDS. And considering the, uh, the long civil war here where people had a number of uh, transitory uh, relationships, the prevalence of AIDS is not as, as common as we would have imagined. But uh, undoubtedly it will, will come as uh, population movements affect uh, the pop uh, number of people in the country and uh, these multiple relationships uh, do have, will inevitably have an effect. I didn't say that very well. But. <laughs> <coughs> I think one, one thing I'd sort of like to, to just to mention really is that the, the age of the command, of course the Liberia command is only 21 years old and from our experience of 
being officers in the United Kingdom where most corps are 100 years old and some celebrating 125 years old. Um, to have the, the number of corps in, in Liberia that were only created and were birthed uh, eight, ten years ago and their history is so short and there's very little um, accumulated history. The majority of Salvationists in these corps have come from other denominations and so there's a, uh, a great uh, breadth of Christian experience and experience of other denominations and not quite so much history of the Salvation Army. And one of the things that we do try to encourage is learning of Salvation Army songs and Salvation Army doctrine and Salvation Army practices which is just not known and with so few books and other resources people don't have access to some of the history and experience that we have had the privilege of having. One interesting feature that we've uh, been made aware of in our year here is that the Salvation Army in Liberia is so young. It is only 21 years since the first Salvationists came to Liberia and because of that most Salvation Army work here is relatively short in number of years. The number of corps we visit that have only been in existence eight or ten years and so their accumulated history is very very limited and people are still learning very much about the history of the Salvation Army and we struggle with uh, a number of uh, the lack of educational material and the resources so that people just don't have the opportunity to learn very much about the origins and the history of the army. We would like to thank the Canada and Bermuda Territory for their support to the Liberia Command. We don't take it for granted that these funds and all the support, including much prayer, um, comes our way. We are very grateful and we know that the people of Liberia, particularly the Salvationists within this command, are so very thankful for those who think of them and in practical ways, through their financial support, send their love to this country. We try our very best to use the funds wisely and we can assure you that we strive to make sure that accountability is there and we just praise the Lord and ask that he will bless you in return for being a blessing to Liberia.